All right, so I've cut out my church. Notice that my church is really, really sharp and in focus. And my background is a little bit softer. I'm just going to hope that everything is as sharp as it can be. But what I was showing at the end of the last video was when I cut it out with the lasso, the lasso is always just going to pick a pixel to cut it at, right? And that pixel sometimes will give you a little glowing edge based on the lighting of your original photo. This is called anti-aliasing around the edge. So to, to soften that, I'm going to select with the lasso all the empty space around my church. So if I turn off the background layers, you'll see it. All this empty space where the grid is coming through. I'm going to select that with contiguous turned off. And then if I turned off my church, you can see that that selection is there. It's all the empty space around the church. Okay, when I put the church back into it, you'll see right at the edge of the selection, it's a perfect selection right at the edge of the pixels. So if I hit delete, doesn't matter how many times I hit delete, it can't get rid of any more pixels, right? What I want to do is called feather this selection. I want it to extend with a gradient just beyond its edges. And the way I do that, I'm going to turn on the background so you can see the effect. I want to get rid of this green that doesn't belong. And I want to get rid at the same time of this brown that doesn't belong on the other side. So to do that, once I have the selection active, I click on under the tool options at the top, select and mask. And then I'm going to tell it to remember my custom settings. And my custom settings for this project and probably for the next project, are going to be set your edge detection to a radius of about five pixels. This is very conservative, but this is an additive process, so we can just keep using it. And set feather to about two and a half pixels, and that's it. Do not shift the edge. That's a mistake students make. They think if they want to grow it, they shift it. But the problem is that can cut into things you want to keep. So now we're just going to say OK. So it doesn't look like it did anything, but notice that our selection now is a little bit different than where the pixel boundaries are. That's because it, it radiated out and averaged and kind of smoothed out our selection. Now this is where the magic happens. I hit delete, and you see how it doesn't get rid of it completely. It like softly erases. And I can hit delete as many times as I want until that effect that edge is gone, like the green in the windows. Delete. Just expand it a little bit more. That's looking a lot better. Delete. That's looking good. And that's probably where I want to leave it, but I see a little bit of green here, so delete. And then deselect. So because it's, it's in the foreground, you're trying to make it as sharp as possible? I'm going to keep everything as sharp as possible until the end. This is actually going to be my middle ground. That's actually where I want the most contrast. But it's always good to control your focus. And you can always take away focus, but you can't add it right very well. So I'm going to keep everything sharp, and then we're going to do selective focus by the end. OK, so for this next layer, before I cut it out more cleanly, I've already softened some of the edges. I can go back and use my 100% soft-edged eraser, pretty large and get rid of these hard edges, right? But now, to make it match, color-wise, I'm going to use levels, my adjustments, my direct adjustments, directly affecting these pixels, not adjustment levels, or not adjustment layers. That would be under layers. Those are indirect. These are direct adjustments. They're under image, so image adjustment levels. First thing I play with, midtones. This is getting more into the middle ground, so I'm going to brighten it up a little bit, but I can limit the highlights. I don't want to push it up to extreme yet, because I want this to be gothic and moody. So maybe about there. I don't want to darken the shadows, because then I'll lose pixel definition. OK, next, image adjustments, direct adjustments, color balance. This has a lot of green in it. 
So I'm going to push the midtones a little bit towards magenta. That's going to help. Maybe a little bit more towards blue. Maybe a little bit towards cyan. Just a, a smidge. Highlights, I'm going to push towards the reds just a tiny bit. And the yellows just a tiny bit. And then shadows, I'm going to push towards the blues and cyans. Maybe... Yeah, maybe into the greens. Nah, it's tough. I'm looking at those rocks. All right, last one, image adjustments. This one's kind of optional, but it's for the big changes. Hue saturation. So I think I'm going to shift it a little bit to that side and maybe desaturate it just a tiny bit. If I desaturate all the way, it's black and white. If I oversaturate it, you can tell. So I'm just going to take it down a tiny bit. I don't play with lightness and hue saturation because Levels does that better. Okay, now, cleanly cutting it out. How can I do that? So there's a lot of trees and debris. If I use the magic wand with contiguous, I can get the sky, but it's going to be tough going. But you see how this edge is pretty different than what's behind it? So instead, I can use a different selection tool, and I'm going to try what's called the quick selection tool. And I'm just going to kind of click and drag inside my my structure there and now obviously I don't want to hit delete because that's what I want to keep so instead what I'm going to do is say select inverse I'm going to swap the selection and what that does is that keeps that as a stencil so then I can go in with my soft eraser at 100% opacity and I can just erase the edge so that's what I like to do with quick selection it's not a perfect tool, but it's good for making little stencil masks. It's, it doesn't get everything. So sometimes when it doesn't get everything, then you just want to go in with your, with your lasso or with your brush. I can just use my eraser with my tablet, make it a little bit smaller, maybe make it a little bit harder, and just go right in. Now, the big thing is because I match the color and the lighting, Notice I don't need to get this perfect, and it still looks like it matches. So if I'm leaving little trace bits of it, like this thing, it still matches the environment pretty well. So using those adjustments really helps. Now what if there's another little remnant left? See, I just got rid of part of it there. I can always just use the lasso directly and just cut it out. This is your own composite, so you can make your own edges. Just select and delete if you want to do that. Right. Just depends what you're after. But I might want to use these trees. So this is a great opportunity to just use my eraser. Nice and big. And lower the opacity a little bit. And kind of find where I want that edge to be. Okay, now I've got all these greens in this tree. So I've shown you how you can use direct adjustments on a whole layer. What I haven't shown you is how you can use direct adjustments on just a selection. So what if I just select around this tree, this element here? Kind of roughly select it using my tablet. Okay, now I can go to image adjustments and I can affect the levels and I'm going to limit the highlights just in that one section, right? I can bring up the contrast bring up the highlights. I could even bring them up so so high that they're easy to select, right? But I'm going to do it more like this. And then I'm going to go to color balance. And I'm going to make them match. There's a lot more purple in the midtones. The shadows are going to go little bit towards the reds. The highlights, a little bit towards the blues. I'm reversing what I usually do. Come on. 
work with me. There we go. So now look how, how much better that looks after just adjusting it with my levels and my adjustments, right? I can even take that selection and duplicate it now and use it somewhere else in my composition. Like maybe behind my temple here. Ooh, make it big, flip it horizontally, and push it underneath that temple. Because I like it coming out the side like that. And I can hit Command T, and I can distort it. This is called internal compositing, when you're stealing from one of your assets and putting it somewhere else. We'll do this a lot with our creature compositing. Because I want to cover up that weird palm tree. right? So now I've got those kind of textures, and I can use my eraser and blend it in. I want to get rid of the hard edges. You know, just over and over again. And because it's a jungle, it's okay to have some mist and some opacity to play with. I can also just use my lasso, or no, my magic wand. Sorry, fourth tool down. Click on the highlights, but have contiguous unchecked. So we'll pick up on all those highlights in the image. Woo, so many. Too many, right? But with just the highlights, now I can just erase the highlights from that, that part. So I'm using that as a stencil. So lots of fun options to play with. as we work on this. Bring that background just a little bit in. And then let's get rid of, actually no, I liked it there, but let's now get rid of this glow around my next temple. So I'm gonna select the empty space, oh, can't quite do that. So I'm just going to use my direct eraser, make it a little bit smaller, and then just at 100% get rid of this stuff. Where it distracts. The hardest thing about compositing is knowing what's going on in what layer. So I'm a big fan of affecting the pixels directly and making duplicates and copies when you're unsure. Be right there. And I'm going to warp this and just push this. There we go. Right to that side. All right. All right. The next layer is this guy. And I'm not sold on this guy anymore because I, I like the transitions here, but I do want to cover up. I'm just going to move it a little bit. This is really going to be helped with adjustments, direct adjustments. So I'm going to scale it just a little bit differently. And now I'm going to go to levels and I'm going to limit the highlights. And I'm going to darken the midtones and increase the contrast. So those are the levels. Now, the color balance, I'm going to shift it away from the yellows. Put a little bit of red in the highlights. Put a little bit more blues and a little bit of magenta, maybe. Actually, a little bit of green. All right. Now, I might go back to levels. 